it's like that military style boot camp. Right. Uh, yeah. What's up, Harley? Thank you. Okay, here we are again, day 1072. Um, we are in uh, ADO week, all things ADO. Um, apparatus driver operator. Okay, so they've had a, um, a kind of a glimpse into what it's like to drive the apparatus, just um, got them familiar early in camp with hydraulics and with driving, just so they can respond on our fire calls that we've had over the last you know, 14 weeks or so. Um, but now we're actually getting them prepared for um, an ADO test that we're having next week, uh, starting Monday. So um, those things will entail kind of a more detailed, um, I, I guess, look into what we've taught them in the past. So we're going to be looking at doing things like uh, a little bit more uh, detailed pumping scenarios. We're going to do some more driving. Uh, they're going to get into the CDO checkoff, getting them familiar with uh, the apparatus. Um, we're going to be getting into all things kind of without putting them through engineer school. Um, they're going to be going to have the ability to drive kind of when they get out in the field, right? They're not going to probably drive probably that first year um, of their apprenticeship as we, we send them out. Um, but the ADO is in the uh, professional development plan within their uh, within their practice and, and how they progress within the organization. So. We've got to get that uh, certification down. That is a state certification for them. Um, it's it, it can be difficult, so we have, we have to take the time. So basically, we've I think we run over this week, geez, uh, probably 13 chapters, real quick, right? It, um, down and dirty, and mostly we get them with the hands on. That's the most important piece. So when they get off of probation after a year on, they may be asked to drive the apparatus at some point. So they need to have those skills down. Um, also, when we send them out, we send them out in June when our uh, wildland season starts to kick off and they may be asked to drive a water tender or um, a type six engine. So they've got to be pretty um, pretty good, I guess, at that kind of stuff, knowing how to run a pump, knowing how to drive um, off road, things like that. So we're getting into that. And I know that um, we can sometimes be short as far as what we need um, folks to, to drive those um, those apparatus um, when we're uh, strapped a little bit with all the stuff that goes on in the summer with us. So having them with some of that knowledge uh, helps us as a department as well. Keep this my side. That back tire lined up with that cone about two, three feet off of it. As soon as it's lined up with it, then you're looking for that second cone in that mirror. As soon as you see that second cone in that mirror, straight back. From that canyon to that canyon, back to Copperton, and everywhere in between. This is our valley. Take pride in that. After 14 years, I still have pride in this valley. This is ours. We protect it. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You guys are to the point in camp. We shouldn't be counting weeks, we should be counting days. Does that make any of you guys nervous? Makes us sad, man. man. Does it make you want to work harder? Because you've only got like 15 more days. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma Before you're out there waiting for whatever call comes in. Days. 
more tired. Yeah. All right, shoulder press. One side. We're going to do five. That's all I'm doing. We then we're going to switch and do five on the other side. On me. One. One. Two. Two. two three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Switch sides. Who's in charge of happiness in your own life? You are, sir. Right, so when we say, oh, how's morale doing? What's this, what's that? Who's in charge of that? Me, sir. sir. Personal investment every day in your physical fitness, your mental well-being, your spiritual well-being, you are in charge of that. Nobody's gonna take care of you. You will take care of you, and then you will take care of the person next to you. Understood? Yes, yes sir. Do you guys know where that is? Steering fluid. Yeah, yeah, this guy is the trans fluid. That's like the air intake. Air intake. Air intake. Air intake. And then this is the radiator Just or the like window. So this week in camp, it is our ADO week, which is apparatus driver operator. And with this particular skill that we could draw for the state test is a CDL checkoff. And what that encompasses is us checking off our engine from the front all the way to the back underneath everything and making sure that everything is operational so that when we do get a emergent call and we do need to respond to your emergency we know that our apparatus is ready to go from the from the very morning we get on shift we do it every morning and we're expected to do this as firefighters do a check off a cdl check off and then when we are working on the ambulances we are expected to do this as well making sure the engine, the brakes, everything is working properly. And we're also gonna check all of our equipment, our tools in the back of the ambulance, making sure that we're ready to go so that we don't have to think about it when we're responding to your calls and that we can just focus on patient care and taking care of what we need to do. As part of the CDL checks, um, we're gonna lift the cab by plugging this device in to electronically lift it so we can check the engine uh, fluids and other components. Hey, what's up guys, it's Chance with uh, Camp 5-4 here uh, during ADO week. Right now we have our recruits practicing our four different uh, driving courses that they could be tested on in ADO week. So behind me right here, you have the confine, confined space clearance um, where the, they'll have to pull in on one side of the cones here, maneuver their apparatus around, and then pull out the other side without hitting any cones or a building or anything like that. So that's the goal with uh, this one. Okay, one of our other um, driving courses that the recruits have to complete today is the diminishing clearance. And so on that one, what they're gonna have to do is navigate a row of cones. And as they go through, the cones are gonna get smaller and smaller width-wise. And then they have to make a controlled stop 18 inches from the farthest cone. So right now I am practicing the serpentine engine driving skill. Uh, the serpentine drill is essentially just driving through a series of cones, making left and right hand uh, turns. It, by appearance, should be a pretty easy skill. For some reason, I'm struggling with this one the most. So today, I am uh, just getting in some repetitions and really trying to figure this one out. So far, I, for some reason, I'm able to back up through the course. I'm not able to move forward through the course. Um, the engines are really long. They uh, don't maneuver exactly like uh, an automobile that we're used to driving. So um, I'm definitely kind of figuring out that learning curve and uh, trying to practice as much as I can. We're kind of coming up with our own formulas that I've failed thus far. Yeah. Backwards, I'm figuring out. Forwards, I'm essentially lost. Forwards, same thing. Spot. It's hard to spot your wheels, but you can kind of spot the cover, like the silver. And then you bend it back in. Here's our this cone.
makes me sweat more than uh, going into the fires. So <laughs> when you're going forwards, you don't have to worry as much about, like once you clear that first cone with your heel and stuff, and you, <laughs> you're more worried about like the front. So as soon as you know that whichever direction, like you're going this way, as soon as you know that this fender, this front fender, is not going to hit that cone. Oh, but only if it's 350, right? Yep, only if it's over 350. Okay, so I don't have that. You don't have that. No. All right, and then my nozzle is a control, so that's 100. Yeah. Really so the, uh, fog nozzle, yep. Okay, and that's 100. So that'd be, and then it's just 136. Yeah. yeah. All right, we've been in the classroom all week doing some math, everyone's favorite. Uh, doing some pump calculations and basically what that is is that the engineer needs to know what pressure to pump that line to so that firefighter gets the appropriate pressure at that nozzle. Too much and that firefighter's gonna be fighting the hose, having a rough time. Too little and you may not be getting enough water to put that fire out. So right now we're kind of going over the calculations. Um, basically we're breaking it down into how big the hose is, how much water we're flowing through it, and what type of nozzle we got on the end. So, we got some whiteboard, or we got some, uh, some practice problems here, going out to the field, doing some quick math, got some calculators. Uh, everyone's got a little sheet, gives you uh, kind of all of the cheat sheet information. And just doing some quick problem solving, going to the pump, and flowing water out the nozzle. Some people like math. Uh, I come from math backgrounds. Some folks, uh, Maybe not so much, isn't their favorite, but it's, I think everyone's getting it. You know, it's done a bunch of practice problems, getting good help from the, the staff here, so I think by the end of the week we'll be good. Hi everybody, my name's Chance Fivis, uh, one of the cadre members out here with Camp 5-4. Um, this is my first opportunity uh, to come out here and, and be with our, our training division, and it's it's been awesome. I'm uh, about 12 weeks in, and it's been great for me to refresh on a lot of things I learned um, in recruit camp and haven't been able to use uh, in the field just due to the type of area that I work in and the amount of fire calls that I get. Um, I'm only five years in and so already um, I've had to refresh on things as simple as, as pulling cross lays. Um, out at my fire station Eagle Mountain we don't even have cross lays on our apparatus. Um, so I had to refresh on that, uh, forcible entry, things like that. And it's, it's been awesome to be able to come back in, refresh those skills, um, try to help these new recruits, um, pick those up and refine them. And then also just for me personally, um, it's been a growing experience. Um, I didn't, you know, really have any experience in these teaching roles so far, uh, just being so new on the department, it's always been learning, 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 whether it was paid call learning, recruit camp learning, being a firefighter, and then uh, being an engineer, it's all been so new to me. So now to be able to pass down um, my knowledge and experiences and things like that is, um, has been an awesome growing experience. And then also just my interactions with, you know, new members of the department and, and people that I guess, in a way that I'm responsible for, um, to be able to, to see them, um, evaluate them and try to um, to not judge these recruits um, by their first performances. So to be able to take a step back and help them grow, watch them grow without um, some of the harsher judgments that we sometimes put on new people. So that's been a great experience for me. My name is Aaron Wood, I'm 37 years old and I was born in a little hole in the wall place in southeastern Idaho. There's a little joke in my family that they came over to that area in the wagon trains over a hundred years ago. They broke down and they decided they loved it so much that they stayed there. And for a very long time, I followed that route. Um, I was born there, my whole family is there. I was married there and I was divorced there, unfortunately. Um, growing up, I never was not one of those people where I always wanted to be a firefighter. I always knew for the longest time, I always knew that I wanted to learn and teach martial arts. I got my black belt, my instructor certification at a very young age, and I did that for a few years. But living in a small town, as you can imagine, I had to learn other things. And I've always been very 
mechanically inclined, mechanically handy. I can fix almost anything. If it's mechanical or electrical, I can just kind of figure it out. Life kind of come at me funny and it threw me a curveball and I ended up living in uh, Phoenix, Arizona for six years um, where I was fortunate enough. I spent six years working on big solar farms and heating and air conditioning systems. So I've learned a lot. But during the brief time I was married, I'm the father of two children and I've been raising them largely on my own for the last 13 years. Um, my children mean everything to me. They are my biggest fans um, and they are my biggest supporters in all this. When I originally had decided to get into the fire service, I was a volunteer and they were fairly young and they, do not, they didn't know what I was doing. And then as they got older and I had to step up and raise them, spend more time raising them, um, I stepped away from the career just to focus on being a father. And I did that for a very long time and one day I just sat down with them and I told them how unhappy I was doing what I was doing and how much I missed being a firefighter and being an EMT. And it was with their support and it was their idea I got back into it. I spent almost 10 years testing for various agencies. It's very competitive, so it was a very long process and every time I felt like quitting or giving up, they were there to keep me going and they are very, very proud of where I am now and how well I'm doing. Um, as far as camp goes, um, my first day here, I was terrified. It was entirely new to me when I started as a volunteer. I was a volunteer in a small town, so everyone knew me and knew who I was. And I walked in here and I was just one of 36 people. And so there was a lot to learn and there was a lot to do. And I spent the first few weeks nervous, trying not to make any mistakes. But once I learned and once I realized that I'm here to learn and I'm here to make mistakes, I came out of my shell and I started learning more and, and doing more and, and making more friends. And that's been one of the greatest experiences of camp so far is learning new things and, and learning and meeting all these new people. And they're such great people. And as I've spent time sitting in the classroom and talking to all the various instructors and guest instructors and all my fellow students, I've decided in my career path, I'm still trying to decide whether I want to take the, the paramedic route or the hazardous materials technician route because either way it, it plays into my, my problem solving skills and my abilities and I've always prided myself on my skills as a medic and being a hazmat tech gives me a chance to learn something that I've never done before, but it also gives me a chance to use the skills that I already have and that have been of value to me. And either way, I'll be able to learn and, and grow and perform well for UFA. Hi, I'm Billy Small, 39. Born and raised in San Rafael, California, just north of San Francisco. Went to school in Boulder for four years uh, where I studied economics and uh, moved back to San Francisco and was a bond trader for 10 years about 10 years of that. In my last year as a bond trader, I, uh, I spent a winter volunteering with the uh, Squaw Valley Ski Patrol and met a whole bunch of ski patrollers and realized that their quality of life was a lot better in my life as a bond trader. And uh, decided I was gonna quit everything, move out to Salt Lake, a place where I could afford to li live on a ski patroller salary, and uh, a place I'd wanna ski every day, and rains less. Oh. And uh, I was able to get a job with Snowbird Ski Patrol, so I'm then girlfriend, now wife, moved out here together. And uh, I've been a ski patroller there for the last six seasons. And best job in the world, I thought. And uh, I was there full time until I had my first daughter. The words, I'm pregnant came. And uh, I decided I, I needed to do something a little more serious. So I took the summer job a little more seriously and uh, became an assistant superintendent with the local golf course. Um, and then the words came again, I'm pregnant. Now I have two daughters. Hadley and Talia. Hadley's uh, two and a half years old and Talia's almost one. They are my world. My wife and I together, we do everything we can together with them. You know, living in Utah, we're outside with them all the time, taking them hiking. Uh, the oldest Hadley, we take biking. She has a little strider that she you know, rides all around on. And we, uh, we have Talia, the young one in a backpack. And it, our family is our world. And, Top it all off, we have a one nap girl chocolate lab that uh, that raises health throughout the house. But uh, between that, we're uh, we're a pretty good time. But I came here because you know, ski patroller. I as a ski patroller, I had a lot of exposure to being a first responder, 
to being involved in a hazardous environment, uh, you know, doing avalanche mitigation, things like that. And I absolutely love it, but I needed something that was sustainable for the long term. I spent the first part of my adulthood, you know, as a bond trader, wanting to, it was important to be financially successful. And I accomplished that and I was happy, but I did not find it fulfilling. As a ski patroller, I found a very fulfilling job. And as a firefighter, I hope to find that being just as fulfilling, if not more. And from everyone I've talked to who's been here, it sounds like the best job in the world. So between those, it's, it's not about, it's not about making money, it's how you want to spend your time. And spending my time here is where I want to be. Moving forward with UFA, there's endless opportunities. I'm really interested in being a paramedic. I'd love to go to engineer school. Uh, there's room with heavy rescue. I'd love to take, take some heavy rescue and just get the experience. You know, through ski patrol, I have a lot of experience with rope rescue, things like that, and to be able to leverage that to heavy rescue and learn all the other aspects of heavy rescue, I think would be really interesting. Uh, between the benefits package and all the opportunity, it, it gives me a, you know, a long-term plan for the first time in my life where I can see my future, I can see where I want to be and how I can take care of my family through retirement. My token line, I, I didn't really deliver too well, but it's, it's, it's all about how you want to spend your time. You know, it's not hard to make money, it's all about how you want to spend your time. Right. Okay, I think you said it perfectly. Cool. Yeah, thank you. You got it.